Hey guys, I just got in another wire shelf for my African violets and I need to put in the lighting system for it. So that's what we're going to do in today's video. Let's get started. So for my wire shelves, I always like to get the shelf liners. It's great because it gives you a flat surface for your saucers and plants to sit on as well as it makes it really easy to clean up water or soil spills. You'll need to measure the inside of your shelves to compare to the dimensions online as different manufacturers have a bit different sizing for these shelf liners. In this case, I had to trim a little bit off my liners to make them fit properly. Once that was done, I was able to use the liner as a template for my foam board. After cutting out the first board, I went and made sure it slides up into the shelving area properly before cutting the rest of my boards. There are many different types of LED lights that come in different widths and temperatures and colors as well as a variety of components to connect your lighting pieces together. I chose to alternate between warm LEDs which are between 2700 to 3500 K and cold white which are between 6000 to 7000 K. You can buy these on a roll with just wire on the ends or you can purchase them with a power plug connected to one end. I've done it both ways depending on the project. This time I went with the wire ends because I already had some power plugs I purchased that fit the proper orientation of my time power strip. Each shelf has its own power cord because I wanted each shelf to have its own dimmer switch. This way I can have more options to organize my violets based on the amount of lighting they prefer. Each LED strip has these colored dots that are sort of a copper color and a cut mark where these are the only places on the LED where you should be cutting. I'm basically laying out the LED strip to see where it is that I can maximize the length of the tape and then I'm going to go ahead and cut it right in between those dots where the line is to cut. Next I have these connectors that I'm going to connect each strip to each other with. After you open it up, it will tell you where the positive and negative sides are. You can tell by the colors coming out of the end. There's red, obviously, for positive, and black. There's a plus and minus also that corresponds on your LED strip. So you want to make sure that you have those lined up properly. I found that it's better to go ahead and just cut a little piece of that paper to stay on the end. If you pull it off, it's sticky on the back and it makes it hard to slide in and underneath. There's these two channels they fit in and then you slide those copper looking dots underneath those metal tips so that it makes contact. And when you have it in there nice and tight, you go ahead and close it up. So I marked on my board to kind of evenly space out. I'm having four strips on a board, um, alternating, like I said before, in between the cold and warm white. I'm going to go ahead and have those little marks so it makes it easy to keep them straight as I'm running them across the board. Now everything needs to be pressed down. I'm going to go ahead and get my next piece ready. Again, I'm going to cut where the LED strip has those copper dots. And then again, I'm going to go ahead and just leave a little bit of that tape on the back on both ends so it makes it easier to slide in to those little component wires to connect the pieces. Sometimes it can be kind of tricky to get them in the channels and underneath those silver pieces. Um, 
You just keep kind of wiggling it until it makes it work. So again, I'm going to go ahead and follow the lines that I created on my foam board so that I make sure that they're equally spaced out. And then you want to pat down um, the adhesive on the back of these LED strips isn't always the greatest, so at the end I'm going to put some tape on top just to secure it in place a little bit more. So we're just going to keep on um, repeating the process as we go to finish up this sheet. Okay, so we've made it till the end and we have our little piece to connect to the wires. Um, I will put a link in the description for all these pieces so that that makes it easier for you to find if you decide to make your own shells. You just need to um, place them in the correct spots and tighten them down with a little tiny screwdriver. And then next we want to connect our dimmer switch. And then connect that to our power plug. Then we gotta make sure that everything works. Plug it in and check that the dimmer switch is working correctly. All the lights have lit up, so we are good to go. Um, next, as I mentioned earlier, the tape on the back of these LEDs isn't the strongest, so I get some just regular scotch tape and I cut the pieces um, really skinny and I find spots on the LED to um, secure it along each root, and especially at the ends where there may be um, the, the part that's dangling off that's holding the dimmer switch or whatever might be a bit heavier, so you want to secure that as well. Also tape the red and black wires down so they're not sticking out of the ends. Then I want to go ahead and cut some square openings in the center of each side of the board. This is so when we slide it up into the shelf we use a clear zip tie to hold it in place. So it'll be held in the center on all four sides and then you just cut off the little excess piece of your zip tie. So here's the finished product. Everything is on its own dimmer switch. It's also on a timed power strip which has been really great for me. You can play around with how long you want your lights to be on and you just really look and see how your violets are doing. If they're reaching, they're not getting enough light. If they've got tight crowns and they're getting too much and you can either back off on the dimmer or you can have less hours per day that the lights are on. Thanks so much for joining me today, and I hope you have a great day.